Oh. I'll take it. Take us in. Welcome to the official podcast episode 255. Today, I'm going to start with the topic, even though Jackson was Fuck beyond yeah. eager. Ooh. You son of a bitch. Moist Esports got its first major win yesterday. Let's fucking go. Yes. It, it was about fucking time. It was about fu- you've Moist Esports has come so close in the past, but it's so nice to see. Uh, it, it was a major event, right? Yep. This was an actual genuine major by all definitions. White took first place at Smash Con yesterday. And it was, oh, a, it was like a fucking yeah. anime run. So... He had to face one of our other players that was in top 48. They fought each other in round one. He team killed him. So (laughs) then after he beat Aaron, he got sent to loser's bracket himself, which is if you lose again, you're done. So losers is really hard. And he had to play, I think it was 26 games. And every single match went to the very last game, very last stock. And he also had to fight our other player at number five, so at fifth place, he had to fight our other player, Cola, and he team killed him and then carried <laughs> on and then won the whole tournament over one of the best in the world, Spargo. It Good was... Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Is there going to be any dis- uh, like disciplinary action against him for all this team killing? No, no. Should be he put powered- a timeout, perhaps. He powered himself up, man. He was like taking their ability. It was like the basketball in Space Jam. Like he just kept <laughs> sapping their talent and like putting it in his own, like, arsenal and just popped off. With or without so, their consent, yeah. It was nuts. It, this this is a very effective strategy I'm noticing uh, fr- from you, Charlie. Just buy everyone in the league or buy everyone in the <laughs> tournament and you win yeah, eventually. You can't, can't lose. Yeah, if there's no competition, so, you win every game. <laughs> What does this what does this mean for Moist Esports then? Does this put you in the big leagues? Uh kind of. So there's like different tiers of orgs and to climb tiers you obviously have to perform better. So winning a major is obviously a huge step in that direction. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get no well the the org will get noticed by a lot of other, you know, organizations. What's the biggest org in in um Smash at the moment? Um, well, T- T1 and TSM have players in Smash, uh, SSG, Space Station Gaming as well. Those are like genuine tier one, hundreds of million dollars worth of like investment and stuff orgs. So those are definitely the biggest orgs in there for sure. Do you have a rivalry at the moment with any of them? Because I feel like that'd be a good idea. Kind of. So Space Station Gaming is super wholesome. Like they're super sweet. Their player, Meister, has beaten us quite a few times, and in this tournament, Light beat him. So I guess that's kind of a rivalry, and also Mars from Panda. But I wouldn't really say like it's a rivalry, because we've only had like three majors total, so it's too new to say. I know Mizkiff wants to snatch up a, like a Smash player or two and make a rivalry with us, which I think is really wholesome. <laughs> I think that'd be fun content to like have a rivalry like artificially start like that so that'll be fun but as of right now i wouldn't really say there's like a clear rivalry right now the biggest like s- the biggest killer of moist esports players is our own player right now so <laughs> yeah I, I think it's i think it's very cute and funny that streamers could just uh snatch up a whole bunch of players <laughs> just for their little feuds <laughs> just for content yeah. i think it's great <laughs> Uh, no, that's super exciting though. That's that's massive. I've been wait. I've been waiting since you started um, Moist Esports. I've been waiting for this moment. Like like you've come close. Your team, I guess, has come close in the past. But yeah. th- this is this is a big win. Oh so my very god, exciting. we were going so wild yesterday. We started just shouting out Bible names, and, and like by the end of it, we got through like every fucking character in the Bible. And then we hit Jezebel, and Light took the last stock. It was it was poetic. We got real <laughs> religious. Mm. So he he went to losers first. So he went through the losers bracket, mm-hmm. and then and then came first overall. Yeah, that's that, insane. That seems like super unfair on him, to be honest. That's because he would have had to have played more uh, well, stocks, right? Well, it's double elimination. So Spargo never lost. So obviously, you should be rewarded for that. So there's a winners and losers bracket. Benefit of winners is you only need to win one best of five. Through losers, you have to win two. So when he got to grand finals, he 3 0'd Spargo right away. And then he, since he was in losers, he had to do it one more time. 
but Spargo then beat him twice in the second set, and then he had to reverse 3-0 him in order to seal it. So it was fucking crazy. Do you think East, uh, Moist Esports is the most exciting aspect of your life at the moment? I I can't remember like anything I've been so hype about. Every tournament we watch is just fucking thrilling. Andrew was there for like the early stuff yesterday, but had to leave. If you stayed mm -hmm. the whole time, Andrew, I think you would have lost your fucking mind on Light's <laughs> Run. It sounds fucking crazy. Yeah, it is so goddamn wild. Sounds like history in the making. It's going to be in textbooks soon enough. So what's next then? Oh, uh, that's we, it. He's done. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. closing the org now. We're tied. <laughs> yeah. You're pulling the team. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> Forced retirement for all the players too. <laughs> it was in their contract. <laughs> yeah. Right now, the big thing that we're trying to do is there's a Rocket League pro team called True Neutral. And we placed an offer to buy them because they're one of the best in the world. So we're hoping that our offer is better than like C9 and shit, who's also probably trying to get them. And then we could have a Rocket League team as well and go crazy for those matches. So yeah, with big plans for Moist Esports. You, you don't actually take any of the winnings, do you? Nope. So it all comes from sponsorships, if you get sponsorships. Yeah, when, when we get those, that's where it's mainly going to come from for like salaries for players and also keeping the organization. So it's not just my, out of my pocket. <laughs> yeah, you're like a, a deranged, uh, what do you call it? Like an investor almost. You're just paying for all these people to go to the tournament <laughs> just yeah. so you can watch. <laughs> it's very cute. He's a fucking VIP from Squid Game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you should start wearing a mask. <laughs> oh, that's what we can nice talk about. segue, by the way. Yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to segue because that's the topic I was going to bring to the table. Yep, you, go for it. Have yeah. you just been waiting to spoil Squid Game for this entire week? Yes, because I'm mad. And when I'm <laughs> mad, I get passionate. Right, but I'm right. very mad it's about this weeks. show. So we, we give yeah, people two weeks to watch yeah, it, to be we, fair. We gave you out there listening a disclaimer that we would be talking about the ending of Squid Game in a near future episode. I believe Jackson has finished it. Taya has just finished, finished it. it. Yeah. Charlie finished it, I know, mm -hmm. a while ago. I finished it way early. I finished it like the day it came out because I was enthralled. So if you're listening right now and you have not finished Squid Game and you are going to watch it, this is your last chance to tune out for a minute and not get spoiled. Maybe pause this episode, come back when you finish the show. Get spoiled. To be fair, look, honestly, whatever lame prediction you had for the show, imagine an even worse ending, yeah. and that's it. You're not going to get spoiled too hard. Don't worry about it. I, I predicted it like one to one, pretty much. Like, yeah. I thought it was telegraphed extremely, obviously, at least the main points. So, boys, well, yeah. and Jackson, who I think was complaining about it last night, how shitty Am is the boy? ending? <laughs> <laughs> you're complaining so much you're, you're no longer a boy yeah you're, you're a, a man gender from my complaining yeah okay that's that's right i hate it so much you, my, you my have balls finally dropped men have opinions they have backs so how shitty yeah it was yeah. it was so bad oh the my last God. three episodes i i i it like it completely tanked the quality of the show to me yeah i thought it was really bad there were so many just dumb points to it uh, I don't know. Yeah, Andrew, I think you'd be better at talking about it because you seem oh, I would love passionate to. about I, it. I would love to talk about it. I've had this discussion like four people now, but I want to have it again because <laughs> I, I, I feel personally attacked by this show because I was extremely <laughs> invested. Like most TV shows Same. I get, you know, I, I do the thing where I kind of go, okay, we've seen this before. Oh, this feels kind of artificially drama-y, and uh, this isn't doing it, and this this show's neat, and this. There are a few TV shows I get really invested in because I like the characters and the plot, and I like what they do with it, and Squid Game was the one of them. too. Yeah, I, I really loved this show's execution, its style. I loved the visual design, like the color palettes they use for a lot of stuff. It was it was beautiful to look at and interesting. And I really like how they just did everything and all the characters were given enough time to flesh out their arcs and all this shit. So I'll talk about my least favorite part of the ending. A lot of people say the ending is stupid and dumb and there are parts that it's just boring and drags on, but what I hate the most about it, and what genuinely upsets me, is it betrays pretty much every character 
and and completely like rewrites and misrepresents them in a way that's just out of nowhere and awful and generic and like leaves a bad taste in your mouth. So you have the old man who was my favorite character in the entire show because he runs contradictory to how the games are set up. People go there needing money. He doesn't need money. People go there because they are desperate and on their last legs. He is not. He wants to have fun before he dies. People go there kind of like untrusting and really paranoid and really like selfish. He's just there to have fun and live his best life and get adrenaline rush in his final age. And He's, his logic is, you know, to the other characters, oh, it's better to live a full life and just go out there and try shit than to just sit around waiting to die. So he is supposed to represent the antithesis of every other character's philosophy. He is enjoying the game. He likes it. He's not there out of circumstance. He actively is having fun. So then his death is so tragic because it also runs counter to the game. He gives up his win. I, I'm pretty sure he's the only character, except you could argue the, the like crazy woman who kills herself to kill the mob guy. I'm pretty sure he's the only character who acts completely out of altruism. Just goes, no, you deserve to win. You can have it. Whoa, you whoa, 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 whoa. What about the girl with the South Korean... Uh, I mean, North Korean girl. She she chooses. She just throws okay, the marble yeah, that's, on the floor. That's fair. I, I did I too. did forget about that, but it's not really against my point. Where the point is that he actively has the win, and then just goes, "No, you take it because you know we're friends, and you deserve to win, and I had my fun, and I'm good." He got what he wanted out of the game. You know, he said, "I had my fun in this and that." And then you cut away, and you hear the gunshot, and it's really sad. It's a really, really poignant scene and well written because the whole point of that episode is that every character has their own relationship. The two mob guys are like being tough, hard ass dicks to the end, and the fucking like psychopath is tricking and becoming less and less human and less and less respectful. And then you have the two girls who have their own backstories, and one of them is like out satting the other so she gets to live. And the man has <laughs> the whole friendship, you know, they're good friends. And then the final episode decides to completely and utterly ruin all of that. Number one, the old man conveniently happens to win or give up or, you know, fake his death on the only game where he could fake his death. How are you going to fake your death on tug of war? You're not going to fake that fall. How would you fake your death on the, gra the glass fucking bridge game? You couldn't. Would not happen. He could, I guess, fake being shot in the other two games, but I doubt that would work. I doubt it. So how the fuck did he perfectly play the game so that would work that way? I don't know. That seems pretty fucking convenient and poorly written to me. Number two. The entire character point of the old man is to run contradictive to the game. So he sits there and he goes, oh, I'm having fun and I, you know, don't really care about the money and I just want to be involved in something. And then what happens in his final arc? People are trash. I hate them. This worthless pile of shit. I'm evil and did this because I'm evil. Ha ha. Fun. <laughs> Fuck these guys. I hate life. It's so unsatisfying and such a complete like ruining of everything they set him up to do throughout the show. No, our friendship didn't matter. I'm just evil and hate people and I love betting. I love making money and betting and being a wacky like rich guy. No. <laughs> To me, what would have been a much better ending for him, there's an episode, I believe it's before the Marble game, where he gets sick. He like has a, like a shaking fit and he, yeah, pisses, he pisses himself. His if he died at the end of that episode, I think it would have been so much better because it would have shown that he didn't even have a chance to win the game. And it would have solidified his viewpoint that he wasn't there to win or have fun. He was just there to survive and like live. And, and live his life to the fullest. And it would have shown the other characters, hey, some people are here with a completely different mindset. And shit just kind of happens. Which is what put them all in the game to begin with. Shit happens. Things happen. But no, he, he lived in a very convenient way and came back at the end to go, by the way, I was actually super evil and hate life. 
<laughs> and that homeless guy out there, that piece of fucking trash, I hope he dies. You're wrong, protagonist, for liking people. He's gonna die. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> that, was, that whole scene was pretty stupid. It was so <laughs> stupid and forced and convoluted. Oh, God. Like, the, the rest of the ending is bad. It takes too long, and the protagonist kind of drags his feet, and the red hair scene is stupid, and him abandoning his daughter is stupid. Why did it's they do that? It's all stupid. It's all, it's what all stupid. What does this explain anime to me? What is... Why does he just sit at the barbie? He looks at like a Karen on the wall and he says, <laughs> I want that hairstyle. So I, he I want to change. No, I, I looked that up. Um, so in Asian cultures, getting a haircut represents a major change. And specifically in South Korea, the color red represents death. So that's why pink. he did that. And it looks stupid. <laughs> yeah, it did look stupid. He's also colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, there, there are tons of other problems with the ending. For example, the whole point of the series overall is relationships. The relationships you make with people. Friendships and family and how you interact with strangers. That is the whole point of the show. So in the final Squid Game, the fucking psychopath friend, he's like, look, I fucked up. I abandoned everyone. I was selfish. I get that now. I'm sorry, protagonist. I'm going to kill myself, but I have I have one little caveat. I have one one little request if I do that. Take care of my family. Just find my family and take care of them. That's it. Now I am dead. And the protagonist goes, okay, I will do that. I promise. I love you. One year later, I haven't done any of that. I don't fucking care. <laughs> and then... He was and then he goes, well, I've been kind of selfish and disillusioned, but now I, I have my resolve. Let me go ahead and fix this. Let me go ahead and fix this and take care of these people. So he goes to the orphanage and he gets out the girl's brother. And then he goes and finds the, the psychopath friend's mom. And he's like, all right, you two are a family and here's the money. And that's a really good start. <laughs> and then you'll think, OK, maybe he'll use the money now to go visit his <laughs> wife and child and support them or he'll or what i thought would be a great ending is he will then use that money to start a new family with the friend's mom and the north korean brother because the whole point of the show is establishing relationships with strangers and making new connections so the whole point of the ending would be he lost his family because his mom died and his friend died and all the people in squid game died but he could start a new one with all the money and all the things he's learned but nope, he, he's about to get on the plane to meet his daughter, and he goes, I have to kill everyone in Squid Game. <laughs> and he leaves from the airport for, for very little motivation and very little reason. To, to briefly go back, I do like that aspect of him just dumping a child on that poor woman's doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the equivalent of giving someone a, a pet for as a gift for, for like a birthday present. Oh, <laughs> he just shows up. That's his oh. way of You must be lonely. Here's a child. Yeah. And then and then I'll wrap this up, but my last point that really infuriates me is uh the episode eight ending to the detective saga so the detective is running around and he's going you killed my brother you motherfuckers you fucking squid game you killed my brother and the the front man walks up and he takes off his mask and he goes no i am your brother and yeah, it's very star wars it, very star wars and i'm okay with that twist but here's the problem with it who cares what does the front man being his brother change at all? How does it in any way affect the plot, influence the characters, anything? It's a twist for the sake of a twist. It doesn't change how the game works. It the doesn't change. The detective did nothing. Like the entire. It did the, nothing. The, yeah. It was basically the entire casino thing from the Star Wars movie. Like that entire plot was not anything useful. it was right it was exposition it was just exposition it was showing yeah. the the vips uh, for, for the, nothing yeah, but the, the and, exterior and, and, and the inside of the organization and that's still the, funny thing. the old man also says that like the old man also gives that exposition at the end anyway so really the yeah. detective did fucking nothing and the whole organ harvesting thing goes nowhere yep also true and then yeah. and then that's the that's the funny thing so the, it does not make a difference whatsoever whether his brother was killed or his brother is the front man. It does not matter. But what's funny is the way that that saga ends is the detective is shot in the shoulder and falls off a cliff and he's gone. And everyone's going, oh, they're probably setting up the sequel. Oh, they're probably like alluding to something. The director of the show outwardly admitted he has no plans for a season two and didn't even expect to make it. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see what happens there. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs>
perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so, no, you can it, tell, didn't so, you? Yeah. He went door to door trying to sell this idea and nobody bought it except, of course, Netflix because they buy fucking everything and it just, it happened to catch on. And I think yeah. most people just... It, it, it caught on in a pretty fucking big way too. It's now number one, by the way. It's it's past, uh, yeah. what was that romance movie we were talking about the other week? The Bridge... Bridge know, people, people. The Bridge... Bridge, bridge of bridge Allerton of or some shit. Bridge, yeah. Well, bridge, caught on, but Bridgerton, everybody... Bridgerton, Bridgerton. I think a lot of people like just like us they just grew disillusioned with it by you know in the second half because you so the way i heard about it i was just browsing twitter on my toilet and i, I saw some somebody clipped like a conservative talk show host talking about it mm -hmm. and they were very mad like oh there's a show it's just about killing people it's torture porn it's murder porn it's just violence on our tvs corrupting our youth and i was like okay this is gonna be good <laughs> so i go on netflix i put this shit on and they don't even die in fun ways like the idea is kind of novel at first like every episode you go oh they're all gonna play different children's games and then they die. Yeah, they but they don't even shook. die in like oh, let me, fun um, ways. Where they, the scene where they were boiling sugar, I thought, oh, awesome. They're like gonna boil people alive in sugar and shit. But no, <laughs> all that happens in every single game is a Power Ranger walks Bang, up to you and yeah. shoots you in the head. Oh, uh, let me let like, me okay. uh, let me give you another good writing contradiction that really upset me. So. Um, this is when I, I first started to kind of see the cracks in the show, and this was the first thing that made me start to kind of go, ah, this is getting kind of lame. Episode five, I think, there's a scene where the doctor and the organ harvesters are having a big kerfuffle, and the runner of the game, he comes up and he's like, I don't care if you sell their organs, I don't care if you eat the bodies, but you don't fuck with the sanctity of the game. The number one rule of this game is it's fair. The number one tenet of this is it's anonymous and everyone is equal. And they boil that into you for a lot of the show. They do a lot of things to show, hey, everyone's yeah. on equal ground and this and that. Let me ask you guys a question. How is the glass game fair? Uh, good luck, guys in the front. You have a well, one wait. to the power of like six hundred thousandth chance of surviving. Good how, luck. How how is how is putting the runner of the fucking games in the games? Yeah, fair? it's not. And that's <laughs> like, the other thing. How yeah. is the old man fair? If the old man is allowed to live and not killed, he has no stakes. If he knows he will be spared because he's the host, then how is it fair? It's not. It's contradictory. It, it, they Plus, really should be like fuck a, it up. Sh if it was completely fair, shouldn't it be like uh, gendered games as well as well, like well, age well, brackets and weight brackets and stuff? Here's what's really funny. With the glass game specifically, I thought there was going to be a trick. So here's the fun thing. Every game has a trick, at least the well-written ones. With red light, green light, you can hide behind people in front of you. With the sugar game, you can lick the back or heat up the needle or do a few things to make it easier to cut out. With the um, tug of war game, there's all the strategies to tug a war with the marble game you can do whatever the fuck you want there's no rules so you saw how like the psychopath guy literally stole them all marbles etc but then you get to the glass game and the whole time they're doing it i'm thinking throw the fucking shoes you're forced to take your shoes off pick them up and throw them at the glass and the one that breaks is the wrong one there you figured out how the glass works but they don't do that and it's like, okay, they didn't think about it. But then later they discover, well, if I can look at the glass, I can see which ones are tempered. And I go, okay, if you look down and get really low, you can see based on the angle. They have figured out the trick. Every game is a trick and they figured out good for them. So what do the masterminds do? They turn they the turn fucking the lights, lights off. off. Yeah, yeah. Which, that, that, that was yeah. pretty upsetting. Like, so it, like what? You want to be intervene. totally random? Yeah. yeah, this is so, it's not fair. There was a moment where you went, okay, this is so stupid and boring and generic. Now, because, okay, so yeah. here's what my prediction was right from episode like, from the moments the front man walked up to the one Power Ranger and he was like, this is supposed to be fair and shoots him. I thought, okay, what about this? What if all the VIPs are the winners of the previous games and That's this is like I their thought. secret That's club? That's what now. I thought would happen they too. They kidnap a yeah. bunch of. They take a bunch of poor people and the hardiest one, the most with the strongest survival spirit gets to join their club and be a billionaire with them. Yeah, that would be kind of clever, right? And then maybe it would turn out that the detective's brother is one of the VIPs and oh, brother, how could you? You kill people and then maybe they have that whole... Discussion. Well, didn't they but show no. that? Didn't they show that the brother was was a previous yeah, winner? The brother or was a previous yeah, winner, he, but he, he was. Won, yeah, right. that's why I thought 
So he okay, is a new so maybe this is going in the direction of he's one of the VIPs and that they're gonna have to have this discussion. But no, literally the most generic. Oh, it's rich people killing for amusement. Yeah, I know. That, that's that that's what so really. That's what really fucking killed me. You have these VIPs who are a cool wild card and add like I love the VIPs. I thought they were fucking hilarious. Um, you have all these different wild cards that differ it from like death game and fucking like all these fucking animes and TV shows where it's like, oh, these guys are locked in a room and have to kill each other like battle royales and shit. And you have all these different elements that make it just unique enough. And then by episode seven, they start playing by the same fucking playbook, the same fucking paint by numbers. They start following the same formulas. It sucks. It, they really set something great up and then the last three episodes just fucking spiral it down. Oh, oh, Andrew, boy. Andrew, you've made great points. It sucks. Can you please tell me about something yeah. that doesn't suck? I'm so, I'm so sorry. Everyone's probably fallen asleep with how much I'm rambling, but yeah, I know I for a fact. Down. I know for a fact they've fallen asleep because they're on a Helix mattress. I mean, Helix mattress is one of the most comfortable mattresses you can buy. I'll bet you many mm -hmm. of you out there listening are watching this shit in bed. You probably got a TV in your bedroom, so you're hooking up the Netflix on there and you. Get in bed because you'll have to doze off to television shows. I think Charlie's been dozing off to One Piece lately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have lately been dozing Sounds off hellish. to fucking documentaries I find on YouTube because, man, they find some of the most, like, soothing narrators on the planet. Holy shit. And let me tell you, when I'm in that Helix mattress, it is easy to fall asleep to it. You don't even need... To take my word for it, Helix has been awarded number one best mattress of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. They've got soft, medium, firm, as well as mattresses designed to cool you down if you sleep hot, or a bigger mattress for those plus-sized folks. All you'll need to do is go to helixsleep.com official, take the two-minute sleep quiz, and you'll be matched with a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. You will also get $200 off of all your mattress orders and Ooh. two free pillows just by going oh, to helixsleep.com slash official. It's a super comfy mattress. I've personally put like lots of parts of my body in mine. I'd like sat in it with my butt and like put my back on it to lay flat, like slept on my stomach. I can tell you every part of my body feels good. It's real good. Helixsleep.com slash official, $200 off a mattress and two free pillows. Comfy stuff. Find the one that's right for how you. The f how the fuck do they cool you? How, like, what's the technology behind it cooling <laughs> you down? Do they pack ice cubes in it? You can find out well, at helixsleep.com slash official. I I'm gonna find out. That sounds fucking great. Yeah. Because I, I, I get really hot uh, when I'm sleeping. Yeah. It's annoying. But I don't have a Helix mattress, so exactly. maybe I'll be uh, looking into that. So yeah, I, I have lots of, as you guys can hear, I have lots of problems with Squid Game because I, I really loved it. And then the last three episodes, it just kind of dropped the ball real hard. <laughs> I don't think so, that takes you know, away from the fun you had the, for the most no, of the no. show, though. I still think overall yeah. it was a very enjoyable yeah. show. It's, it's no Game of Thrones. Like, I won't go back and yeah. watch the first four seasons of Game of Thrones, no matter how much right. I loved Game of Thrones at that point. It's, it's not one of those. Like, I can still appreciate right. the first four episodes, the squid game for what they are, and it's I, just entertainment. I think if fun. you watch the show, like, if you're, if you're pitching it to someone who hasn't seen it, if you watch it and tell them, listen, as soon as the final episode's game is over, just turn the show off and imagine he went and used the money and lived happily ever after, I think it's an excellent show if you just do that. So that's honestly one of my main problems was that he, in that final game, he started to uh, like want to, you know, end the games. Mm -hmm. I thought that was just so stupid. I, yeah. I, I can understand what they were going for, but he's literally watched like uh, 450 people die and then he's just, he's like, well, uh, you yeah. know what? This guy that's betrayed me so much during these games, I still like him a little bit, so we'll end the game. Well, they, let's, they let's, have let's good writing. To to the end the game. They have good writing there, though, because there are just, there are actually good moments of character arc. For example, in the final Squid Game, you have the protagonist who's like super upset, and you think he's kind of turning toward that side because he gets like these really like, 
clever scheming looks and he's not saying anything and then during the squid game he ties his shoe and picks up a bunch of sand and throws it in his eyes and just like cockily walks across the court so they had these hints of like oh he's kind of changed he's getting into the fucking game too now you know he's starting to play but then you see his real nature and he doesn't want him to kill himself and he gets really regretful and it's like like those are good moments those are well-written moments, but then I when they have everything to... everything with the squid game at the end was super well done. I yes, had zero, absolutely. Like, I think that was a really good conclusion to both characters, and I really like the lead-up to it. I where agree. Where he kills the girl because he knows that they would have voted to end the game. Like, it, it's so smart. Like, yeah. I still think, even though a lot of the big well, ideas... Which is going to die anyway. Yeah. Well, no, I that, really think that the scene... big ideas just didn't land at the end. That scene with the casket's fucking great because, like, it's obvious she's gonna die. Like, when he's banging on yeah. the door and they open it. So, so when she's banging on the door and they open it to bring in a casket, like, I, I saw that coming a mile away. They're not gonna open the door to give her medical attention. So it's like, okay, they, she, she bled <laughs> to death. She bled to death and they're bringing the casket in. That's obvious. But then when he turns around and the guy stabbed her just to make sure she would die, that's great writing. That really shows the dichotomy between the two characters. But, you know, then when they have to follow up on it in the later episodes and see what he's taken away from it, it's just nothing. You know what? If he was really smart, while while the main character's banging on the door, he would have crept up and uh, sliced him in the neck instead. Now, that's what I expected, because the camera gets real tight on him when he's banging on the door. So I really thought that the psycho friend was going to, like, try to attack him. While he wasn't Why looking. would you go for the person who's already, like, two seconds away from dying anyway? <laughs> <I> <laughs> he think, wasn't thinking clearly. Well, he explained. He uh, he thought they would vote to end the game because she no, was I injured. Know, I, I think it, right. I thought it was great. I thought that was really smart. Yeah. there, There's... It's not a bad show. It's really not. It's just a show that went on for too long and wrapped things up poorly. Very poorly. Yeah, how cool would it have been if it just ended off the, f the first episode and the main character died in red light green light? He was one of the first people that gets killed. In, in the credits <laughs> roll. Yeah. It's a good game. <laughs> just a short film, yeah. So why, why do you guys think that the brother uh, joined the organization then? Because clearly he, he won, so he's like a billionaire or what, well, millionaire or whatever. He, he doesn't need the money. So why did he get indoctrinated into that lifestyle? Then? Now, see, Jackson, that's a cool, interesting question that the show could have answered and yet didn't. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't believe uh, that the director didn't have plans for the way further that stuff. Ended, I think he yeah. deliberately set up. Yeah, I feel like he de deliberately set up uh, threads to continue on. He must have some idea. I don't know. I, I, I also don't think you go around shopping this around for like 15 years or 20 years or however the fuck long he's been shopping it around and not have some kind of uh, deeper plan for it. Because it, in its current form, I don't see how it would have taken that long to, to write. I don't know. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Mm-hmm. Well, regardless well, we of whether or not so he has right. a plan or not, he's th th there's definitely yeah. a season two coming. Netflix well, is yeah, going to force that shit there, out. Netflix has not officially announced a season two yet, but I would very be, be very surprised if they didn't do it. Well, that, that's just because they're trying to figure out how many seasons to announce. Yeah. <laughs> the negotiations must be so weird because you just know that they must have paid this guy like 10,000 bucks or something for this fucking yeah. shit. And I was like, hmm, I want a hundred million dollars per episode. <laughs> He's like Dr. Evil. <laughs> uh, fuck. So what, what do you... Guess? What do you guys want to see from the next season then? What what are the main There needs to be see? some kind of resolution to the whole brother plot line. Yes. I think that's necessary. Also needs to explain like why the brother becomes the front man and it also needs to explain like mm -hmm. uh, the guy who goes around in the subway slapping people. I think those are the big 3 they need to hit on. I think the show but needs to like not try to continue plot threads. I think they need to give things a good conclusion and not drag stuff on in season two. Like, they, they need to realize when to pull the plug on something and not have a whole episode dedicated to going, well, what about if this happened? And it's just like, shit. Just lazily tacked on stuff. 
I think just have I cooler think... deaths. Make the games a little fun. <laughs> Jesus, it's like so boring for a guy just to walk up to someone and shoot him in the head. Well, it was so I don't see how they can make a season two without actually like participating in the games again, because that's the main interesting point yeah. of Squid Game is those games. So my yeah. theory is the hair change signifies he's going back to those Squid Games. He's getting back in, and they won't even recognize it's him because he's got pink hair now. They so they it's gonna be all good. they could do something similar. Um, I, I I don't know. I guess spoilers for Battle Royale, the like actual movie and manga Battle Royale. Um, one of the plot threads of that show is one of the major protagonists is a previous winner who snuck himself back in to try to stop the entire thing. So they could they could do something like that. I mean, it's been done before. So, but they have, but didn't they have like scanners to biometrically um, check competitors? But he's got yeah. pink hair yeah. now, Jackson. I'll <laughs> never suspect yeah, it. True. Who cares? The, the fucking cops still snuck in perfectly without anybody noticing not only did the organization not notice even his secret organ harvesting buddies didn't notice that pissed, that actually <laughs> did kind of piss me two off. different groups that actually did kind of piss me off because like he has a whole like god knows how long of a discussion with them and none of them recognize him till the end and when they're questioning on him the doctor throws a hissy fit and they're like ah let's just ignore it <laughs> yeah. like, like all right it's i i was okay with that one i let it go because it's like yeah if he gets caught what's gonna happen oh that's the end of that but eh, it could have handled that better have you so i'm sure you guys have heard of alice in borderland by now since this got compared to it so heavily yes. have any of you seen it no but i was no. gonna start watching it no so i watched the first episode like it must have been a week ago now i haven't finished uh, caught up yet but I want to. That's not a good it, sign. It's very, very like anime. It's not super similar to Squid Game, but I want to bring it up because it, it had a big smile on my face. So they have like the games, right? The, so in the first episode, they go to like this, this like hotel looking thing. And there's these rooms. You either pick the die door or the live door. And when you open it, if you pick the <laughs> wrong door, a laser beam just fires through your fucking skull. And if you take too long within the time limit, you get lit on fire because the whole room ignites. <laughs> and that's pretty cool yeah it's it's cool and the main guy is so fucking over the top anime silly so he's this Ugh. savant he's a gamer savant with this remarkable memory so on the way into the hotel he noticed that there was a specific bmw model parked outside and he knew the exact <laughs> dimensions so when they went into the game and they realized it was life or death he thought back to the bmw he's like oh my god the bmw outside it was a model f5 that means it's 453 centimeters from hood to starboard side. Now, knowing this dimension, I noticed that this hotel was approximately four stories high. That means it's approximately five of these BMWs stacked on top of each other end to end. Using these measurements, I can deduce the exact measurements of the room that we're in and most likely how big the entire facility is. And then he starts like mapping it all out based on like this BMW he saw outside because he knew how big the BMW was. So then he started to guess correctly which doors went where. It was so fucking goofy. I love it. Holy shit. This sounds was incredible. It a legitimate, was it a legitimate example? Like he actually indicated from a BMW or like a car? Or were you just joking? No, no, no. That's, that, that's exactly what he did. He noticed that there was a car sitting outside. It was a BMW. And he knew that it was X amount of centimeter or X amount of dimensions. So then he used those dimensions to like look at it uh, in a different way to measure it against the building that he took one glance at on the way in. <laughs> and then right before he got on the elevator to go to the game floor, he noticed there was a map on the wall of the facility. So then he was able to like take those measurements and that one glimpse of the map and put together an accurate map of the game rooms and where the doors would go. So which ones would avoid death? That's fucking Just awesome. <laughs> So just once, I want a character like that who's obviously super smart and like it's being shoved in your face that he's super smart and he notices everything. Like he just opens the first door and he gets his head lasered <laughs> off immediately. <laughs> like he's wrong. That's exactly. <laughs> he's looking at like, I mean, that kind of happens in that one. Like it's it's good. It, like I really highly recommend it. It's super goofy. It doesn't seem to take itself nearly as seriously as Squid Game, and mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. I think it really revels in like the over the top well, nature. Yeah, of it. yeah, that shows that uh, shows kind of more both. fantastical, right? Like don't the games take place in the entirety of Tokyo? I don't. I've only watched one episode. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, so I, I really don't know the grand scheme of it, but right. God, yeah. that's, a, that's a strong recommendation. Then. It put such I, a, I highly recommend this show. I've watched one episode. Well, <laughs> the only reason I've watched one episode is because Tiana went on a trip and I can't watch it without her. So I've been, like, I've been, I've been waiting. That's so cute. It was, it was so good, though. I think Andrew, you in particular, would really love oh, it yeah. because it is, it is some turbo anime shit with the protagonist. I, so I am currently watching uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, which I think I mentioned last week. But when I finished that up, I was going to move on to this show. What do you think of Avatar The Last Airbender? Oh, my God. I, I regret not watching it as a kid. It is literally one of the best shows I've ever seen. I, am I can't believe fucking... you didn't watch it as a kid, man. Well, as a kid, I didn't really like anime, so I just kind of thought it was an anime and didn't bother with it. But I am shocked that a level with this much, like, character writing and plot intricacy is on fucking Nickelodeon. It, the, some of these plot threads and character arcs are better than, like, modern HBO Netflix shows I've seen today. It's crazy how well written this show is. Does it appeal to, I don't know where, like, what angle you're coming at it from, uh, like, a, pers a perspective of liking it, but, like, do you think it, uh, do you think adults, it, it, like, adults can enjoy it? Or oh, is it just uh, 100 fucking kids? percent. So I have zero nostalgia for the show. I did not watch it growing up. I watched maybe one or two episodes and didn't like it because I, <laughs> I didn't care for anime. So I just immediately dismissed it like, oh, it's anime. This show sucks. It's, it's basically an anime. And, like, I, I literally didn't watch it. I know nothing about the show. I didn't even know the plot. All I know is there are element benders, and that's it. I didn't know what the Avatar is. I didn't know what Aang could do. I had no idea about any of it. And as a fucking near 30-year-old man, I am fucking hooked. It, it is but how absolutely good. How interesting are, the, like, how interesting are like, the themes and such? Or are they toned down? Is no. Is it, like, a, I, a children's show? Or it's re I was resonant? I was worried about that. I was worried it'd be a nostalgia thing <laughs> where it's I'd like, uh, this is kind of tame and lame. But no, it, it feels like, like fucking Star Wars or Lord of the Rings, where, yeah, it's not that, like, gory or adult, but it's got some adult themes. It, it talks about, like, actually... Yeah, I, I don't know, like concepts that you can get into. Like one thing that kids shows do a lot is they never explicitly like get into death. People aren't killed. It's kind of like, oh, he died off screen or, oh, we defeated him or, oh, he's gone now. But no, in Avatar, there are scenes where they're like, like fighting a war and they're like, our soldiers are dying. We need more troops. And like, they really go hard. I was, I was kind of surprised. Have you not seen it, Jackson? Nope. Really? Jeez. What the fuck? Wow. No, what, did Andrew, what, what do you mean, really, Andrew? You just watched it. You well, hadn't I seen thought, it. I thought you good seen stuff. It. Like, Jackson hasn't seen Breaking Bad either. You sit around and watch yeah, shit like Yeah, what the like fuck Mind is that? <laughs> like, you actively are avoiding Calm Breaking Bad, down. even while admitting it's probably going to be an incredible show that you'd love. I said, no, I've said I've watched the first, like, four episodes and just couldn't get into it. I didn't enjoy it, so... It's not for me, but I can see. Jackson, like, Jackson. I can understand that enough people like it that it's probably good. Jackson, if people, you like Star people. Wars, which I think you do, you will love I Avatar. Don't. It's the same kind of like made for the whole family adventure action y like character based action. It's really good. I, I've finished season yeah. one. It's I'm excited. I'm very excited to keep going. It's very good. That looks good. So, yeah, I, I guess, Kaya, you've been talking about this show for since we started this podcast. You were absolutely right. It lives up to the hype. It's so good. I hope so. I mean, honestly, it's been so long since I've seen it now. I'm <laughs> kind of, I want to save myself. Like, I feel like I, I would, because I've rewatched so many shows recently and been disillusioned, like Dragon Ball. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess just Dragon Ball. <laughs> but no, yeah. It's instilled me with this fear that's, oh no, what if I remembered wrong? What if it actually sucks? But I think it's still good. I think, I don't know. I probably, I will rewatch it at some point. Would you say it's simply safe good? Probably, yeah. I Ooh. mean, even if you held like a crummy phone up to a simply safe camera, I'd be watching on the other end. Exactly. Because Simply Safe has just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera. Simply Safe, the system that US News and World Report names the best home security system of 2021, has just gotten even better. This brand new outdoor security camera is engineered with all the advanced tech and security features you want and need to keep you and your family safe. 
Something that I personally like about Simply Safe that I've noticed is setting it up is way simpler. I know it's in the name, but it's true. It's way simpler than other security systems. You don't have to go through a bunch of loopholes. You don't have to like calibrate a whole bunch of garbage. You just kind of install what they give you and you're ready to go. Super easy. There is an ultra wide 140 degree field of view on this outdoor camera. It's also got 1080p HD resolution with an eight times zoom. You can see crucial things like faces and license plates if you need to capture evidence. It's also got a built-in spotlight with color night vision. So day or night, it's going to work and it will integrate with your existing Simply Safe Home security system. So now you can protect your inside as well as your outside. To learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe <laughs> wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com slash official. That's spelled S-I-M-P-L-I-S-A-F-E dot com slash official. What's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off of your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service for free when you enroll in, in, in interactive monitoring. Simplysafe.com slash official, S I M P L I S A F E, 20% off and your first month of interactive monitoring free. I go into that link. Check out the new wireless outdoor camera. Anyway, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I don't know if I want to overhype it because I guess maybe if you guys are nostalgic for it, it might have, you know, stronger connections. But as someone who's never watched it before, it, it's, it's just downright great. It's just a very well-written show where you give a shit about every character and every episode's got a good moral or a good kind of, it, it feels like, like Eastern, uh, philosophy, Star Trek where every episode kind of has like a moral to it or a fun little like conflict or like and the characters have to solve it or, you know, decide what to do. But at the same time, there's a big overarching plot about characters you care about and they have good motivations and like they establish good lore and all the factions are really different. The Fire Nation's very different from the Water Tribe who are very different from the Air Monks. It's it's just really Is good. anyone categorically evil in it? Is there like a main See, antagonist that's unspeakably evil? Yes. There, there is and there isn't because there is a big bad. There is a character or two where it's like, okay, you are the bad guy. You are the worst villain ever. But within their faction, there are like relatable villains and people where you can go, ah, you know, I see it from their side or, oh, I'm kind of rooting for them actually. And that's that's what makes it a good show. You know, because you don't expect this from a fucking children's cartoon on Nickelodeon. But that's where it was. Do you think it's the most poignant and uh, best children's show? No. Courage the Cowardly is. Dog is. <laughs> <laughs> what lessons did you learn from that? I learned just never talk to anyone ever, maybe. And move to a <laughs> farm. Yep, and don't answer the door if you live on a farm. <laughs> ever. <It's> a <laughs> don't ever go outside either. And yep, cats are evil <laughs> as well, I guess. Uh, I mean, I, I can't really review Avatar yet because I'm not done with it, but... Oh, you're not done? No, it could have a... I mean, it season, could be no. another Game of Thrones. It could have no, a really bad fucking no, ending that makes you hate According it. to Twitter and no. everything I've seen, season two and three are only better, so... The I'm show excited. literally yeah. only gets better, and it has yeah. such a fucking beautiful conclusion. I'm ready. It does. I'm ready. I'm excited. Does Aang ever go through, uh, through puberty? Or is he the always a kid? <laughs> He's an adult and wait. Oh no, he what? Uh, well, okay, spoiler alert. I mean, in the second not really spoiler. And the, the second series takes seventy years after. It takes place seventy years after the original. Oh, Korra. Thereabouts. So yeah. Oh, I'm not watching Korra, so we're good. But yeah, apparently, well, I haven't seen Korra, but no, apparently, I Korra is pretty good. Yeah, I've heard Korra's oh, like okay. So I wasn't gonna ruin Avatar with it. Is it by the same people? It is. It's not that bad. It's not as bad as people make it out to be. It's again, it's another one of those like, oh, I fucking hate this thing. Gamer rage. Mm -hmm. Where then it died down two months later. It really wasn't as terrible. I also would say it's not as good as the first series, but 
It doesn't need it to be awful. as good as the first series. It just needs to be yeah. decent. It's still has fun segments. Is it one of those things where it feels like they just wanted to do more with the Avatar brand, so they went, fuck it, we'll make this? Yeah, I mean, I, one thing I'll say, I actually like the villains in Korra way more because they had better motivations, I guess, which, again, I don't mm. want to spoil, but, like, I even forget their names. Azir? Zahir? Zahir and Amon. They were, like... Way better villains than, in my opinion, the Fire Lord, who's basically just this imperial king who just wants to conquer the planet. Right? I don't know, man. Fire Lord's voiced by Mark Hamill. And that's pretty fucking cool. It's pretty fucking cool, yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Marky's in it. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. There's a lot of famous the, voice actors in this show. Marquee. Every episode has one. Man. Uh, if it wasn't, I don't know. I. Maybe I should watch it, but it's... Kai, maybe we should watch it together. I think that'd be cute. Sure. I'm down. Alright, sounds good. I don't really want to watch a children's show on my own. You watch Star Wars on your own, <laughs> shut up. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm watching I watched it. it with Charlie, actually. Yeah, Clone Wars. He did. I'm watching Avatar on my own. It's fine. <laughs> I had to have a parental figure there. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> What next? Hmm. Um, well, we have a bunch of topics, Jackson. Do you want to pick one? We can do one less topic. Uh, y yeah. Did I have a topic? Yeah, you pissed it a bunch. So did I. All right, well, you go first. Uh, what, what do you mean I posted a bunch of topics? I posted a big cock on 6 ix Spotify <laughs> page. It's not really a topic. You're okay. just laughing at well, it. Take your pick. You posted... You po Okay, I'll name yours. You posted three Spanish men who pretended to be one female author. You pasted <laughs> yeah, one big black funny. fat cock. And you pasted... What was the other thing? Oh, the bow, bow and arrow murderer and also something about Riverdale. A screenshot you thought was maybe fake because I was so stupid. <laughs> yeah, so they're really your poison, buddy. Specific. And, and to, to specify, the big, uh, big cock image was like... Uh, it, so 6 9 Spotify page got hacked and the cover art on it got replaced with a giant fucking cock just hanging over it. And I just found it <laughs> randomly. Like, I was just going through music and I found it. So I posted it in a Discord chat like five minutes after it happened on Spotify. Um, not really a topic, though, because now it's gone, obviously. <laughs> that was a good topic. Yeah, well, could have been a publicity stunt. It made me fucking chuckle because I immediately checked if it was real and it was... <laughs> yeah, it was just there. Uh, it was this giant cock hanging over his name. <laughs> Six Nine's the one that went to prison, right? He's in prison, he, so it can't be he's him. He's not in prison anymore. He got released. Yeah, he uh, he squealed on a bunch of people, didn't he? Yeah. Oh no, oh, he's a rat. Mm-hmm. Oh. Maybe that's why someone posted cock. Although it kind of the picture of the cock kind of gives off the impression that it's his cock, and if so, it's enormous. So it's kind of a compliment, if anything. That's a that nice would be impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't imagine a micro penis. like that. Every time you get hard, you fucking faint. This shit's crazy. Anyway. Okay, here I found a screenshot I wanted to mention to you guys because you guys care about Pokemon. And uh, I thought this was funny. So this is a person. Uh, her name is Liz Mayer. Verified on Twitter. She says, I have resorted to burning Pokemon cards as a punishment when my ah. kid doesn't do basic stuff he has to do. Oh, yeah. So Aww. this got ratioed very hard. Uh, a ratio of like 20 to 1 almost. She follows up. The basic stuff is eating. He comes home without having eaten any of his lunch. Cart burns. He doesn't eat enough dinner. Cart burns. Bear in mind, my kid is about 4 foot 6 um, at age 7 and yet weighs less than 55 pounds. He needs to put on some weight, specifically muscle. So she burns up uh, Pokemon cards. Yeah, burning his. <laughs> she's, she's, she's burning just, his She's just publicly bullying her her son as well. She's publicly yeah, bullying she's him on Twitter. Yeah, burning your child's possession is such a good way to get them to shape up and not resent you in any way. Oh, I know not too much about child psychology, but I'm pretty sure this is how you create a serial killer who turns his victim skins into Pokemon cards. Yeah. It, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is the trick. If you want what an was, example what was of their like... name? Liz Mayer? I want to see this. If you uh, want an example of like a wrong way to parent. Channel, Liz Mayer. 
M A I R. M A I R. M -A -R. Sorry, go ahead, Andrew. Twitter. Didn't mean to cut you off. Well, no, I was just gonna say, if you want like a good, strong example of how not to parent your child, this is this is hitting a lot of buttons. Yeah. Good is, lord. Is, this is the pro wait, is this is this satire or something? Because I'm looking at a Twitter profile. Her profile picture is the exact same as her like uh profile banner and she's staring directly into my soul she she looks crazy <laughs> oh, that's scary why does she have the same photo twice i don't like that at all liz i don't like that change it your son wouldn't approve i don't think so it doesn't look like satire on our website yeah, she's got a whole website dedicated to bullying her son <laughs> my son's you go to our website <laughs> <org, yeah. laughs> click here to burn a pokemon card <laughs> God. Why even buy the Pokemon cards in the first place, you bitch? So she can burn, burn them, Jackson. It, it, if you go to her website, she does the same stare into the camera and she looks like a psycho, like, Lego person almost. She's staring <laughs> you down. Liz Mare is the owner of Her website's called Strategies. <laughs> her strategies oh about God. burning her, ch her children's possessions. She looks That's like the strategy. type of woman like to, to, like, hate her children. Yeah, it straight looks up. Like it's she, like a political grifter, looks like it a seems. Nah. Yeah, she, she looks does. scary. Fuck, imagine having a mum like that who poses for pictures <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> mom, oh my I God. got bullied. Okay, give me your Pikachu cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got bullied at school, huh? Let me show you real bullying. <laughs> Fucking wet willies. Isn't it like. Uh, again, I know nothing about kid psychology. Like, I understand some form of punishment, like you didn't do what you were asked of your chores, so you don't get to play video games today, or you have to go to bed early. But yeah. isn't it like very negative punishments, and that's counterproductive if you destroy their property or you smack them around and shit? There's a difference between taking something away and destroying something. <laughs> yeah. Like you, if she took what would be smart if she was like a sensible woman is she would go, oh, you didn't eat at school. Now you can't use your Pokemon cards today. You know, you have to eat or, or, or else you can't also, use them. But <laughs> also burning them doesn't do anything except yeah. piss the child off. Yeah. I was going to say burning, burning as well is such a, like a vicious act. <laughs> You're like turning the thing into <laughs> what ash. If, what if she's like, going real hard? What if his collection is like first edition shadowless, like base set cards and she's burning Charizards oh, and shit? Imagine. I'm, ca <laughs> I'm calling it. I'm calling it though. This kid's going to turn out to be like a serial arsonist eventually. This is going to create such a... Co complex with fire in his brain. I think she was doing a little bit of trolling. I saw in one of the replies they had a screenshot of something she said where she said she was going to start tweeting deliberately offensive stuff just to spice up her timeline. I think she was trolling. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Liz Mayer's got a or sense of humor. One of those, or I was just pretending to be retarded, you guys. I'm not really that dumb. Haha, ha, get it? Just, you all fell for it. You're the dummies. I'm not seeing any essays on mayorstrategies.com about this, so I'm not sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> she might not even have a child. She does seem insane enough to lie about that. I, I actually just don't think she has a kid. <laughs> yeah. I hope that's true. Maybe her strategies are bullying strategies that she sells. Uh, to yeah, her she sons. she has been interviewed Schoolyard since, bullies. and her claim, you know, however much you want to believe, is that she was deliberately joking, and none of that is real. Yeah, yeah. So well, we'll see. Hmm. She claims. You never know. I I'm tired. I'm tired of. Yeah, well, let's let's put that child on the uh, in court under oath. <laughs> let's let's find out once and for all if his mum is as evil as she sounds. Well, she has a legitimate Wikipedia article that doesn't mention anything of satire, at least. So she, her, like that dead, creepy stare she does, that's real. That is her. Oh, yeah. She looks uh, like yeah, but a... it, doesn't, it, it doesn't mean she can't joke around as well. I know, uh, I'm yeah. just, and now I'm just being mean, but she looks like she's trying, like she just landed on Earth and she's trying to fit in. Yeah, but that's like 50% of people on Twitter, so. Yeah. Yeah, then again, this is all Twitter, so who cares? <laughs> This is Twitter. Yeah. I I'm, I'm se I seriously hate the internet at the just in general because I can't believe anything anymore. I'm too trusting. 
As soon as I see oh, something, Jack I just want to believe it's oh, true. I want to, I want to oh, believe it's true. That's so adorable. Like, actually, unironically <laughs> fucking adorable. I know. I'm going to cry. I'm so oh, tired of getting oh, taken oh. advantage of. Let me believe in Tana. <laughs> I wish Santa dreams. Claus was real. I wish these Twitter beefs yeah. weren't real. Oh. Uh, I don't want to live in a world where Liz, Liz's child isn't getting bullied. Can I tell you about something that is totally real, though, Jackson, <laughs> and that I full wholeheartedly support? Mm -hmm. It's oh, called... I don't know if I can trust this. It's called Kraken. You, it's okay. The people. Oh, I can't trust this. Yeah, the people of Kraken won't mislead you. Because I've been using Kraken since before this podcast. I, I check it pretty much daily. Because they got you all the price reports. They've got you tons of different options for buying and selling. You can do all sorts of shit with it. So if you're invested in cryptocurrencies, you should make sure that you're doing it through Kraken. I mean, with Kraken, you can buy and sell over 50 of the most popular cryptos like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, 24-7. Super easy to get started. Just download the app, create an account, and you'll be investing in minutes. One of the coolest things about buying crypto through Kraken is that you don't need a lot of money to try it. Even if Bitcoin is worth like $500,000, you can buy as little as $10 worth and do it on Kraken, which I, I always love telling people because a lot of people don't seem to grasp that. Some people are like, oh, I'm priced out of Bitcoin. It's $50,000. I can't afford that. You don't have to buy a whole one. You can buy a piece of it. You, you can just buy fractions. A lot of people don't get that. You can find out for yourself why Kraken has been one of the highest rated places to buy crypto for 10 years. Go to kraken.com slash official to learn more or search for Kraken in the App Store. That's kraken.com slash official. It's one of my favorite exchanges. So go nuts. Mm-hmm. Yes. Crypto's rising again, too. It is. So uh, we need one more topic. For, for this, yeah, for this final topic, I, I do want to talk about this uh, headline that I read yesterday. Uh, I'll, I'll just read it out loud. Lauded Spanish female crime writer revealed to be three men. <laughs> so there was this giant uh, female crime writer in Spain, like critically acclaimed, and she finally got her reward and three men turned up to receive the reward. And I just love the <laughs> idea that these... <laughs> you can, See, you can't trust anything these days. E even uh, my favorite Spanish female crime writer, Carmen Mola, turns out to be three old men. <laughs> <laughs> with rusty beards i just love that it's such a it's such a funny story it's great so apparently these guys were already known uh, for writing stuff for tv and they didn't want to they didn't want basically the attention i guess or all the baggage that comes with their names attached so they just made up a name a uh, pseudonym also they wanted to dispel the uh stigma i guess which is apparently a thing of uh books written by multiple people so they won an award that is worth 1 million euros, which they, I guess, now have to split in three. Uh, the biggest award, literary award, apparently, and they won it. Three guys. So a victory for <laughs> feminism. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird strategy, like but it seems too. it paid off. Yeah. That was a pretty bold well, move, like honestly. Yeah. I think it's cute <laughs> because it's, it's a complete reversal of the usual thing, because usually what happens, a lot of female authors have to pretend to be men, which is why, like... JK Rowling goes by JK Rowling, right? So initially when she was writing her books, you couldn't tell if this was a female author or a male author and she wanted to be taken seriously by publishers. These guys did the opposite thing. They just made up a woman, hit that there's there's just a three dude bros sitting around writing a I think it's a crime novel too. Well, maybe there's some genres that female authors do uh when when female authors are attached to certain genres, maybe it does better for those books. Maybe cri uh, like this this crime fiction genre is one of those. So maybe it was a strategic thing. Yeah. <clears throat> um also JK Rowling has often published books under the name Robert Galbraith. <gasps> Just, so she's mm -hmm. done it too. Robert, yeah. I love his books. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. So just another layer to the whole trying to publish as a man to get noticed. Mm hmm I hope we get to we the point where one of these one of these awards is eventually picked up by like two small children or something. Something wild yeah, like a monkey. Like a dog something. comes on stage and they put it in its mouth. Walks away. Just an oh, AI. Was... 
see how far we can get with this. I love that. It would be great. Let's do one more short topic. We should do one more. All right. Uh, what do you want to talk about? I, uh, actually, we can, we can do a patron question if you want. Sure. Make it a good one. Yeah. Give us a All spicy right. one. All right, so Royce Halderson, uh, beloved patron of all of us, we know him well. Uh, this one's for you, Royce. Thanks for sending in a question. He says, turning 18 this month, and it has me thinking, do you guys think that turning 18 is still worth anything? Like, you get taxes and voting, but is there anything else? Yes, it makes your life infinitely worse, because now you can be tried as an adult. <laughs> yeah, all those crimes you were thinking about committing, you can't do anymore. Yeah. Happy birthday. <clears throat> I think 18, well, maybe, maybe it's different in America, but 18 was the last birthday I even remotely cared about. Well, the upside, the from, the upside as well for turning 18 is you can have sex with anyone who's over 18. So. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, like, there's nothing else over, over here anyway. There's nothing else past 18. Uh, unless you count 65, which is when you can legally retire. But I think they've raised that to 68 now, so <laughs> Fine. It's, it's getting further and further away. What an away. interesting fact. <laughs> do you not have a retirement age over there? We do, but it's kind of arbitrary. It's whenever you want. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. No, we have a designated retirement age. That's one hell of a party, though. Birthday party. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, I honestly don't remember it. Like, turning 18 didn't mean anything to me. I don't even no. remember it. Birthdays, Why not? Birthdays are entirely I arbitrary beyond changed. legal rights. Like, oh, you're 21, you can drink now, and that's it. Nothing changes. It's just what they you can, can be legally do. for the person, though. Maybe you didn't think you were going to turn 18. Right, so what, what, this surprise, person, surprise, you did. what this person needs to do is ask themselves, what does being 18 mean? Do they want to treat it like, oh, I'm a full adult now. Okay, great, you can do that. Do you want to treat it like nothing? You can do that too. Birthdays only mean what they mean to the specific individual. You know, some people really celebrate their birthday and go all out and love it and lavish in it and go, oh, it's my day to be special. But other people, like myself personally, I don't give a shit. It's just another day. It doesn't really change anything. I think it's a good excuse to get together with people. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. true. Do you guys have any particularly sad <laughs> birthday stories? Do you remember any, any like, <laughs> harrowing events at your birthdays? Uh, Thankfully, no. <laughs> no, not that I can think of either. Nah. Do you never ever really sad My mom thing? never burnt Pokemon cards. <laughs> uh, I, I, I remember once <laughs> that I was... So, it was like a super young birthday. I think it was like my eighth birthday and I got given money as a present but then I had to pay the money back immediately for the things that I owed so I got given the gift but then I had to give the money away immediately to like my to grandparents I, I don't know I what? can't remember but I, I what all I know is it old owe money <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the specific like the specifics about it all I know is I got money that I immediately like immediately as soon as it ended my hand it was like some weird gesture I got given the money just to hand to someone else and I was so confused as an eight-year-old I was like well, was I it like a lesson all right kid, I don't know. you're eight now time to pay bills bitch all I could uh, I don't know all I could smell though was my burnt pokemon cards shit was wild <laughs> <laughs> that's mean <laughs> No, nah, yeah, that taught me a valuable lesson. Uh, don't trust my parents, <laughs> or, or don't don't take don't take loan deals with my parents. Jackson, you're back to not trusting anything. Yeah, <laughs> this is a lifelong lesson. It's a hard day for you. Yeah. Uh, nah, I hope you had a good birthday though. This that question was sent in like two months ago, so it's already happened. But happy birthday! Yeah, hope happy it went birthday. Well. Look forward to your 21st when you can legally drink, because that's a thing over in America. Yeah, that one's a fun birthday. Which also barely matters. Mm -hmm. 21 <laughs> is usually a pretty big birthday for most people here. Yeah. yeah, but you guys drink before 21 over there anyway. Like, no one cares so, if you, you drink you guys probably 21. drink before 18 over there all the time. Oh, yeah. Over over here, like, you drink from when you're, like, 14. Yeah. Every, every culture does that. No one, there, are, there are laws yeah. in every civilized culture that it's, like... You don't really obey. They're there, but everyone's like, ah. Well, you even know. the laws, even the laws are very lax. I mean, I, uh, I don't know if it was Germany or someplace else, but I, 
I think it's Germany, where like if you go to a restaurant with your dad and with your parents' consent, somebody under 18 can order alcohol. It's like fine. You know, if your dad says yes, that's not even the law really gives that much of a shit about it. Yeah. I I don't know about that. I saw I saw a cops episode or something like that. I think it might have been live PD something uh, in America where like a house party was broken up and all the kids were getting taken out in handcuffs and put in paddy wagons <laughs> and shit. I was like, that's that seems a bit extreme. They're just fucking dumb kids drinking. Can't, like, how old were sure, they? take the alcohol, take the alcohol and shit away from them, but don't like lock them up. It's kind of fucked. I don't know. They were like fifteen, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that is useless. She's really dumb. Oh, wow. Well. Anyway, happy birthday to anyone out there who's currently going through that ordeal. <laughs> if you get through it. Uh, you can find us over at patreon.com slash the official podcast if you want to watch some bonus episodes. Um, there's 80 or so episodes over there ready for you to listen to whenever you want to. Um, yeah, thanks for spending some time with us and we'll see you next week. Mm-hmm. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, bye-bye. bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.